Hey everyone, this is Ross, and today I'm going to be telling you how to make a CO2 reactor for planted aquariums. Uh, this reactor will allow you to diffuse carbon dioxide into your aquarium to improve the growth of your plants, it'll improve the colour and the speed that they grow. Um, I have done a video on this quite a while ago, but it wasn't very good because I didn't know much about CO2 back then, so I just thought I'd make uh, an update video on how to do it. Um, so first of all I'm going to go over the materials that you'll need. So the first thing, one of your most important materials is yeast. This is regular baking yeast, it's for bread. Um, a lot of people ask what type of yeast to use. Um, any yeast will do really. Um, most shops won't sell dead yeast because it's there's no yeast for it. Um, yeast is typically used in the, in the production of bread so you need live yeast in order to do that so just pick up some yeast from Walmart wherever wherever you want really it's everywhere and um, you can pick it up really cheap you're not going to need much of it anyways so you've got your yeast you'll also need a funnel or a rolled up piece of paper so you don't make a mess you're going to need a cup just a small cup uh, you're going to need a 2 litre bottle this is just off a coke bottle um, you're going to need some sugar, quite a lot of sugar, and you're going to need a bottle roughly half the size of a larger bottle. So this is, I think, a one litre bottle. It doesn't have to be the exact same size, just roughly the same. If you live in the UK, this is a LucasAid bottle, so you can just use a LucasAid bottle for this. So that's all the materials you're going to be needing for the reactor itself. I'll come on to the diffuser later on in the video. Um, you're also going to need a warm water source. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing to do is fill a 2 litre bottle two thirds full with warm tap water. Um, the temperature of the tap water doesn't have to be too precise, but it's going to be roughly 40 degrees Celsius. So that's about body temperature, and that's the temperature that the yeast activates at. Um, so it'll start working at about 40 degrees Celsius. Um, so yeah we've got a bottle um, two thirds of the way full. Um, don't fill it right to the top because when it actually starts working uh, there'll be a lot of bubbles produced and those bubbles will contain alcohol and you don't want that to siphon into the aquarium um, because it'll probably kill the fish. Okay so once you've got your two litre bottle two thirds full with warm tap water. Next thing you'll need to do is get your yeast, open the packet and get a medical spoon. Um, you don't need this, you can use a teaspoon if you like. But you're looking for roughly five millimeters of yeast. So just put it on the spoon, about five millilitres. You can measure it out properly if you want. I'm just kind of estimating. So I've got it on the spoon. I'll get my funnel so I don't make a mess. I'll just read just the camera and I'll put the yeast in the funnel. Okay so the yeast is now in the bottle. As you can see it's kind of floating as a layer on the top there and it slowly starts to sink. What we need to do now is to actually activate it. So just put the lid on the top. I don't have a lid so I'm just going to put my hand over the top and shake it up. So I'll show you once I've done that. Um, you need to shake it up for roughly a minute. Okay, so once you've shook up the yeast and water, um, you'll notice that'll go like a beige colour and you'll have some froth on the top. That's completely normal, you've done everything right. Um, so the next thing to do is get a cup of roughly two thirds of sugar in it. Um, just compare it to my hand for the size. So yeah, just fill that two thirds full. Uh, put your funnel back in the top of the bottle and put the glass with the two thirds of sugar into the bottle. So I'll just pour it in the funnel. Okay, so I'll just, it's in there now. And the next thing to do is shake this up for about a minute. So I'll show you once I've done Okay, that. so once you've shook up the water, sugar and yeast, it should start producing CO2 straight away in small amounts. 
um, it can take up to three to four hours to actually produce CO2 in large amounts and that's when you should really hook it up to the aquarium but you can hook it up to the aquarium straight away so now I'm going to show you how to make it safe for fish okay so if we were just going to hook this two litre bottle straight up to the aquarium it would probably kill off most of the fish pretty quickly and that's because it doesn't just produce carbon dioxide another byproduct of yeast is actually alcohol and alcohol is a bad poison for fish it's uh, very toxic to fish it's okay for humans because we're larger animals we can handle it but for fish it's a very bad poison um, so we need to remove this alcohol and the solution is very simple all you need to do is bubble the carbon dioxide or CO2 that comes from this reactor through some clean water um, so I mentioned earlier you're going to need a 1 litre bottle here's the 1 litre bottle uh, fill it roughly halfway up with tap water it can be any temperature you like and what we're going to do is try and bubble the carbon dioxide that comes from this bottle through this bottle and then into the aquarium um, so that way you actually remove not remove most of the alcohol from it so I'm going to show you how to do that now okay so to remove the alcohol that's produced in this reactor we need to bubble it through water and in order to get the carbon dioxide into the water um, we need some airline tubing and the caps off of two bottles um, in my case I'm using CO2 um, tubing it's basically the same as airline tubing but it's a bit more clingy if you feel it's slightly more sticky than airline tubing so that kind of minimizes the amount of carbon dioxide that you lose along the way uh, so it just gives you a better seal um, you can use silicone to keep this inside the cap but if you drill a hole of five millimeters into the cap uh, the airline tubing is actually six millimeters so it'll be a very tight fit but you can squeeze it through and once it's through it should produce an airtight fit that the CO2 can't escape from so just drill a 5mm hole in that cap and thread the airline tubing through make sure it doesn't actually go into the solution make sure the tube stops in the air and screw it up very tight so that's that done, that valve then follow the airline tubing down now it goes into this cap which goes in the 1 litre bottle now you'll need to drill two 5mm holes in this cap and have one piece of airline tubing coming in from the 2 litre bottle this piece of tubing has to go under water because remember you want to bubble the carbon dioxide through the water so this one has to go under water and through the other hole Thread another piece of airline tubing that is in the air inside the bottle make sure it doesn't go under the water it has to be in the air and then when this pressure inside here builds up it will push down this tube it will then get forced under water it will bubble up inside here and the CO2 will be collected by that airline tubing it will come down here to the diffuser. Okay, so at the very end of the airline tubing, the, the part that goes in the aquarium, you'll need to connect a CO2 diffuser to it. Um, CO2 diffusers diffuse the CO2 into the aquarium water, so that just means it releases the carbon dioxide into the aquarium water uh, so the plants can use it up to grow. And the best CO2 diffusers are really shop bought, you can't really make one yourself and they're pretty cheap, they're not that expensive um, so there's a few different types you can get this is my favourite type, it's just called a uh, ladder CO2 diffuser and what happens is um, when this is in the aquarium the CO2 comes down here a bubble of CO2 is then released and it works its way up this ladder very slowly and because it's going so slow it's always in contact with the water so the longer it spends in contact with the water the more gets released into the water um, 
so the more that gets released into water the, the more the plants grow um, so I would suggest one of these ladder CO2 diffusers and they don't restrict the flow at all so you can have a very weak reactor and it will still work with this another type of diffuser it's kind of like an air stone but it's white and it's, it's glass if you go on google images and type in ADA CO2 diffuser then um, I'm sure lots of pictures will come up and it might take you eBay things like that this is just my favourite um, I would suggest changing this solution every one to two weeks or else it starts to, pro to produce a lot of alcohol and this can't really handle too much alcohol I'd also suggest changing this every week as well alright so if you like this video and if it helped you I'd really appreciate it if you left a comment uh, telling us what you thought of the video and um, please like the video and please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching. Bye.